Yeah. Scott, this is Detective Luke Cavello. I need you to listen, okay? Whatever this is about, we'll work it out. I'm here to help you with that. You can't help me. Yes, I can. What you got is a temporary solution. Don't make it a permanent problem. First step forward is to let the hostages go. Scott, work with me here. Good. Now I want you to drop the gun, walk out nice and easy, hands behind your head. End this. Scott, now drop the gun. Scott, drop the gun. Drop it! Detective Lupo, this is Detective Bernard. We're from the 27. Lieutenant Donner, Earl Shooting Team Leader. My associate, Sergeant Lampert. What do you got for us, boss? Sergeant Scott Whalen, 12 years on the job, starts getting his load on. Next thing he's taking hostages. I gotta play out. The guy drew down. The gun wasn't even loaded. Cop suiciding by cop. Okay, well, we can help you canvas for witnesses. Yeah, we got to cover. All right, well, how are you fixed on interviewing the officers who fired? We'll handle the interviews. Maybe we can get you some coffee. You know who you're talking to? We're not trying to step on your toes, Lieutenant. But we need to be able to tell our CEO there's a good reason we're not working our usual cases. Found him in Wayland's pocket. Alphabet City address on the keychain. Doesn't match his primary residence. Check it out. And report back. Maybe we can get you some coffee. Scott moved out a few years back when he got married, but he kept the place. Rent controlled apartments. People like to hang on to them. What'd he do, sublet it? Yeah, he had a Russian grad student for a while, but the guy bugged out a few months ago. And since then? Place has been empty. Scott couldn't find another tenant. He got way behind on the rent. Landlord gave him to the end of the month. Then he was going to evict him. Okay, thanks. So the landlord was kicking Waylon out at the end of the month. Yeah, Waylon would have had a tough time explaining his friend here in the closet. How long has he been dead? A week, give or take. There's blood caked on the back of the scholar. Yeah, we found a dent in the wall over by the window with blood spatter. One thing might have something to do with the other. You think? You haven't find any idea why you've been poking around? No, but I'd say what you have here is a male Caucasian, 60 to 70. Rich male Caucasian. Merino wool, inlaid ivory buttons. What do we got here? Uh, Whalen had the lease on this place. He was keeping it as a sublet, but it's been empty except for the John Doe there. Going by the size of the maggots, he's been dead about a week. Yeah, it looks like he died in a struggle. Maybe with Waylon. Okay, we'll take it from here. Sorry, we caught this one. So we'll handle it. We could always use some coffee. I appreciate what you're saying, Lieutenant, and if we clear this John Doe homicide, we'll be happy to share the credit. But my detectives will be keeping the case. <sighs> I'm not sure the brass would agree. I'll ask them. I'm having drinks with Deputy Commissioner Galen tonight. Hmm. Now tell me you're gonna clear this case. Uh, well, uh, John Doe is still a John Doe. His prints aren't in the system and he doesn't match any missing persons. Cause of death, skull fracture. Courtesy of Sergeant Whalen. Could be. He was the only one with access to the apartment. 
Talk to me about this Waylon. Uh, he was behind on his rent. He was working all the OT he could rack up. Money problems. This might have something to do with it. His cell phone records show a lot of calls to a nudie joint on the west side. Yeah. A stripper habit can get very expensive. So he's running up debt. You throw in a dead guy in a merino wool suit, and it looks like Waylon got himself jammed up big time. Which might explain why he decided to go out in a blaze of glory. Talk to his widow, see if she knows who this man in the wool suit is. I can't believe it. Well, between the sublet and his overtime, we can see the money was a big worry. You want to tell us about it? Trisha, there were a lot of calls from Scotty's phone to a strip club. Do you know anything about that? Scotty said we weren't supposed to talk about it because it's against the department rules. Oh. He worked there. Yes, as a bouncer. A second job on top of his overtime. Why'd he need money that bad? It's all my fault. I was so stupid. What did you, you do? It was a scam. I got an email from some official person in Nigeria. They said that they needed my help, and if I put in a little bit of money, I'd get a lot back. It all looks so official. How much did they take you for? 62,000. All of our savings. I thought Scotty was gonna kill me, but he was so sweet. He forgave me. Well, he must have loved you a lot. We're trying to identify someone he might have known. Older guy, 60 or 70, white, well-dressed, maybe rich. That's not familiar. No, that doesn't sound like anybody Scotty knew. Did you know that you had something taped to the bottom of this? No. Let's see what we got here. He's like old and valuable. A letter from Ulysses S. Grant to Jefferson Davis. And this one has a deed of trust written to Woodrow Wilson. God, Scotty, what did you do?